In all of the reviews and discourse I've read relating to A Clockwork Orange, there's an important question I've not heard asked. Would the Ludovico technique actually work? Classical conditioning theories backed up by experiments such as Pavlov's dogs encourage us to give author Anthony Burgess the benefit of the doubt. Pavlov conditioned dogs to salivate in response to neutral stimulus by repeatedly presenting food along with the neutral stimulus, a ringing bell for example, until the two became associated. After the conditioning was achieved, the dogs would salivate at the sound of the bell even if no food was present. One aspect of the Ludovico technique that matches Pavlov's studies is Alex being accidentally conditioned against music. Pavlov found that his dogs began to salivate not just in response to a ringing bell, but also to the presence of lab technicians in white overcoats. But there's a limitation in these kinds of experiments with animals, because the animal has virtually no understanding of the human-engineered test environment. The dogs are not aware that a conditioning experiment is taking place, nor can they comprehend the motives of the technicians or the economic and political context of the experiment. But Alex is very aware of these factors. He knows that his unpleasant experience during the Ludovico screenings is due to a drug, not the contents of a movie screen or a piece of music. It's purely speculative that an unpleasant drug experience would associate itself to concepts presented on a cinema screen. Depending on his perception of the screen content, Alex could end up with a fear of blood rather than the concept of violence, or perhaps a fear of war or Nazi propaganda. The association could even take a completely different route, such as an aversion to cinema screens, straight jackets, lid locks, or men in white overcoats. Another way to think about it is to imagine a pleasure drug association experiment of a similar nature. A lot of hippies in the 1960s watched Kubrick's previous film 2001 A Space Odyssey while under the influence of LSD. Yet there have been no press stories to my knowledge of those people having intense acid flashbacks when seeing the film again. The artificial premise of the Ludovico technique is equivalent to making someone watch a dozen sci-fi films on acid on the assumption that the subject will then have an acid flashback response to anything else science fiction related. Such broad conceptual association doesn't work. There are hardwired stimulus response patterns that humans and other creatures cannot control, these being the subject of a science called biosemiotics, but learned associations are weaker and are easily subject to change. In neurolinguistic programming, the fast phobia cure has been used to demonstrate how intense lifelong associations can be changed in a matter of minutes. The repetition approach used in the Ludovico technique is also unrealistic because intense phobic-like responses are usually acquired through one trial learning. For example, a single unpleasant experience of a spider in childhood can result in a conditioned fear reflex lasting into adulthood. In fact, repetition often leads to desensitization rather than reinforcement. One trial learning theory was developed by Edwin Ray Guthrie and was presented in his book, The Psychology of Learning. Being the meticulous researcher that he was, Kubrick would more than likely have inquired as to the validity of the Ludovico technique while scripting his version of A Clockwork Orange. And with a single hidden clue, he acknowledges that the fictional Ludovico technique wouldn't work. On the writer's bookshelf, visible as he clenches his fists while listening to Alex sing in the bathroom, is a copy of Edwin Ray Guthrie's The Psychology of Learning. Now this presents an immediate puzzle. If Kubrick knew the Ludovico technique wouldn't work, then does it actually work on Alex in the film? Let's examine the humble narrator's conditioned responses in detail, starting with the scene in which Kubrick covertly placed the Psychology of Learning book prop. In the novel by Anthony Burgess, Alex is inadvertently conditioned against all music by the Ludovico treatment, but in the film he is only conditioned against Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. So now you have the same reaction to music as you do to sex and violence. Oh, no, Mrs. You see, it, it's not all music. It, it's just the Ninth. You mean Beethoven's Ninth Symphony? Uh, that's right. I can't listen to the Ninth anymore at all. When I hear the Ninth, I get like this funny feeling. We're told this slightly later on in the film, after Alex sings in the writer's bathtub, but in this particular scene, not only is he engaging in behaviour that contradicts the supposed aversion to all music that was described in the novel, 
he is singing a piece of music that he actually associates with violence. Twice he recited the lyrics of Singing in the Rain while beating the writer and his wife. As he's singing in the bath, he hits the water with a flick of his wrist in the same manner that he gave the writer a double kick in the groin. At the stormy bath chase, everyone from the place, come on with the rain, I have a smile on my face. At the stormy bath chase, everyone from the place, come on. He is reliving the violent impulse. This should trigger him into feeling ill, but it doesn't. The Ludovico treatment hasn't worked. And no, I haven't forgot about the suicide attempt scene. We'll return to that topic shortly. In this scene, there are also visual reinforcements that the conditioning didn't work. In the first shot of Alex in the bath, he has a flannel placed over the upper half of his face and a sponge floating over his groin a symbolic repetition of the mask and groin pad he wore during his first visit to the house. In the second shot, the sponge is moved to the end of the bath and floats between Alex's feet, just as his groin pad was pulled down between his feet in the build-up to raping the writer's wife. He is still a violent thug, and he's mentally reliving his past violent glory. There are two distinct possibilities that can explain Alex being unaffected by his Ludovico experiences at this point in the story. It could be that the conditioning is simply worn off. Or it could be that the conditioning never worked in the first place and Alex was simply faking his sickness response all along. I'll stake my money on the latter because it's strongly supported not just by the psychology of learning book prop but by many other details in Alex's behaviour. His motive for getting himself selected for the treatment was to escape from prison. He'd already read about the Ludovico technique in a newspaper, so he had some idea of the methods involved. Yet he feigns ignorance to the prison preacher, the doctors, and through his lying narration, to us, the audience. He lies to the preacher that he doesn't know the name of the technique. And he reads broadsheet newspapers and magazines before asking Dr. Branham questions that he already knows the answers to. Once in the theatre, Alex's unpleasant experiences are real, but given the prospect of life in prison, most of us would be willing to undergo a couple of weeks' worth of intense discomfort as an alternative. Alex lies that he doesn't understand why he felt sick in the theatre, just as he lies that he's learned his lesson. I just don't understand about feeling sick the way I did. I never used to feel sick before. I used to feel like the very opposite. I see that it's wrong! It's wrong because it's like... There is the discrepancy of his objection to the use of Beethoven's music, but this is related to a complex political theme, which I'll cover as briefly as I can because it's not the central topic of this video. In the novel it was Beethoven's fifth symphony that Alex hears during the treatment, but Kubrick changed it to the ninth symphony as part of a political theme concerning Nazis who loved Beethoven and the European Union anthem which is a distorted variation of Beethoven's Ninth and was adopted in the same year that Clockwork Orange was released. This is why Alex responds so negatively to a distorted version of the ninth later on. And the scene is intercut with the Beethoven look-alike writer sitting at the head of a snooker table looking much like the bust of Beethoven which Alex was hit over the head with by the cat lady. His suicide attempt isn't about Ludovico conditioning. It's about a political realisation regarding fascism and its musical associations, surviving Nazism and re-emerging in new forms such as the European Union. Now after hearing me say that, some of you will have your media-conditioned conspiracy theorist bell going off in your heads like a well-trained Pavlovian dog. But remember, Kubrick made Dr. Strangelove and Eyes Wide Shut, 
two films that scream conspiracy. He also stated in a letter he published in the New York Times that a clockwork orange warns against the new psychedelic fascism, the eye-popping, multimedia, quadrasonic, drug-orientated conditioning of human beings by other beings. Also, take a look at the original trailer for A Clockwork Orange. Among a variety of images, which include snippets of Nazi propaganda, words flash repeatedly on screen, including metaphorical and political. So, let's get back to the Ludovico issue. After the Ludovico treatment, Alex is the subject of a stage demo. In this scene, it is completely in his interest to stage his own cure because a failed demonstration would result in his reincarceration in prison. The minister speaks of the rubbed hand of hypocrisy and then he rubs his own face as he tells a colleague within earshot of Dr. Brodsky that he has full faith. Prison taught him the false smile, the rubbed hands of hypocrisy. Our necks are out a long way on this, Minister. I have complete faith in Bronsky. If the Poles are right, we have nothing to lose. In the book, Alex spouts his objection as the preacher and minister debate the morality of the Ludovico technique. He says, how about me? Where do I come into all this? Am I just like some animal or dog? Am I just to be like a clockwork orange? That last line in particular is crucial to the book's themes, but Kubrick omitted it entirely. In Kubrick's rewrite, Alex fakes his sickness response. He burps as he sits up. Not feeling too bad now, are you? Uh, no, sir. Which we already know he can do at will. How'd you do that, then? Uh, and then he asks. Feel really great, sir. Good. Was it all right, sir? Did I do well, sir? Fine, my boy, absolutely fine. Alex knew perfectly well what was expected of him, and he acted his part accordingly. This indirect mutual agreement between Alex and the minister was also communicated through a short verbal interaction in the prison courtyard. In the novel, Alex objects to the minister's statements and is in turn chosen for the Ludovico treatment against his will. Kubrick drastically alters this interaction. You're absolutely right, sir! Shut up, leading hole! The minister is impressed with Alex's ability to lie outright about his crimes. What crime did you commit? The accidental killing of a person, sir. He brutally murdered a woman, sir, in furtherance of theft. Fourteen years, sir! Excellent. He's enterprising, aggressive, outgoing, young, bold, vicious. He'll do. Why would the minister need a criminal who is enterprising? Because Alex is the type of lying opportunist who will pretend he has been reconditioned which will mutually benefit himself and the minister's aim of clearing out prisons to make space for political offenders. Soon we may be needing all our prison space for political offenders. Common criminals like these are best dealt with on a purely curative basis. We're not concerned with motives, with a higher ethics. We are concerned only with cutting down crime. Yeah. And with relieving the ghastly congestion in our prisons. Cutting down crime is merely an illusion the minister needs to fabricate to justify his policy. And the Ludovico lie is the propaganda tool he needs. Alex then responds by thanking the minister for choosing him, but this didn't happen in the book. Thank you very much for this chance, sir. Let's hope you make the most of it, my boy. He's basically telling Alex to put on the best act he can for the doctors and the press. <laughs> 